Howdy campers, Rena Ballerini here to teach you about my newest friend, Bio Louie. Bio Louie is a Kemp Swidley sea turtle and he's part of an art installation all across Galveston Island to teach about turtles, why they're endangered and encourage conservation of these amazing animals. The collaboration has been uh, through Clay Cup Studios and Turtle Island Restoration Network and I've been extremely lucky to get to paint Bio Louie. Bio Louie's newest home is going to be at Burnett Elementary. And as Burnett Elementary's mascot, they're pirates. And pirates are explorers. And so we thought that it was a great idea to have Bio Louie explore a little bit of the unknown. For years, scientists, sailors, explorers, and pirates have gotten to travel the oceans to get to learn more. Bio Louie takes a trip all the way down to the deep sea. The deep sea has barely been explored. We actually know more about the surface of the moon than we know the deep sea. So Bio Louie gets to take that adventure. He starts in Galveston Island, swims all the way to the deep blue sea to find his treasure. Bio Louie explores the deep blue sea. He gets to run into a lot of really cool characters. Now, to live in the deep sea, these animals have to have certain adaptations to survive there. About the deep sea, it's very cold. It's a lot of pressure because you have all this water pressure and um, it's very dark. So animals have to have certain adaptations to be able to live and survive there. One is the absence of light. So a lot of the animals in this absence of life, light will um, have very large eyes and these large eyes will allow them to capture as much light as possible in their body. They also have the ability to produce their own light. They do what's called bioluminescence. Bioluminescence is light produced by light. So bioluminescence, light produced by light. Animals will have chemical reactions or symbiotic relationships with, uh, with bacteria that will be able to actually produce and light up. These areas in the body where they can light up are called photophores. And on those photophores, they can actually light up and display signals to other animals. So one of the reasons that they'll use that is um, to attract fish. So we were pretty well known um, angler fish will actually have an angler, this little portion right here, that will be filled with all of this um, bacteria that will light up. And whenever it does, animals will actually go towards that light and it will be able to eat them. So it's attracting those animals to them. We also have animals like the comb jelly and other species of deep sea jellyfish that will actually signal to other similar species that they're there. The comb jelly kind of makes this kind of like piano-like light, um, kind of like you're going on piano chords and it will be uh, shifting through. and. Um, and makes these brilliant, beautiful signals so they can signal to other species, hey, I'm here, just because they can't see them, right? We also have invertebrates like the Tomopteris as well, this marine worm that will also be able to produce that light. Another reason they have the ability to produce this light, other to attract prey and um, to signal to others, is to escape. So we have our squid here, and squid will actually kind of emit, you know how squid will ink? They'll emit light and they'll swim backwards, right? So the light's going this way, the squid's going this way, and it confuses the predators. Because if a predator's going, they're going to go towards where the light is going, not the opposite direction. So uh, squid are sneaky and so they can go back out that direction. So they'll be able to do that as well. Um, and so those are the reasons that they have this production of bioluminescence, these photophores that will produce light. They also have to deal with pressure. So this ratfish right here, ratfish are cartilaginous fish. What that means is their body skeleton is made out of cartilage. If you wiggle your nose and wiggle your ears and do the robot, those are places that you have cartilage in your body. But the places we have bone, bones are very rigid. This, this flexible body allows them to deal with all the pressure. So if you've ever seen the blobfish on land, this kind of like angry looking blobfish, that's after its body has been taken up, but it's very blobby. There's not hard structure in it. At the deep bottom of the deep blue sea, 
they look like a completely different fish. Um, and so that pressure change is really extreme and so they have to be able to survive with that. Also cold. These animals are cold blooded so it allows them to um, be the same temperature of the ocean. They are able to survive there, but these are really harsh conditions. Thank you so much for joining BioLui and I as we explore the wonders of the deep blue sea. There's so much more to learn and explore down there, and I hope one day you guys become scientists and get to learn that. And I hope at Burnett Elementary you're reminded that every time you see BioLui that there's so much to explore as a scientist. Thank you so much to Turtle Island Restoration Network and Clay Cup Studios for filling the island with art, conservation, and education. I've had so much fun painting this, and I'm really going to miss Bio Louie, but I'm so glad that he's going to get to be inspiring and uh, get to see the kids every single day. So on behalf of Bio Louie, I say, see you later. It's been fantastic. <laughs> Bye, everyone.